Um, I think last week we stopped here, where I said the state space for presentation. of a dynamical system looks like this, where x is the states, u is the control. Right, this is a dot, this is a differential equation. And y is the output. And this representation is really defined by these four matrices, a, b, c, and d. In aerospace engineering, d is very often zero. Uh, I have very rarely encountered a situation where d is not equal to zero. It's usually equal to zero. In a lot of applications in aerospace, we have almost we have uh, measurements almost always available. So if, if the measurements are available, then C is equal to the identity, which means I have all the measurements available, in which case Y would be equal to I times X, right? Or <coughs> Y is equal to X simply, right? So this is what you would usually encounter in aerospace, but even if not so, we will start or keep this generic representation. So let me give you a small example, not an aerospace example, but an example where we can show something like this or how we get to this from a dynamic system or a physical system. Let's say you have a mass and you have a little damper Let's say you have a dynamic system like this. Um, this here being a spring. And this one being the damper. So if you would define the position, the neutral position of this mass M at a certain reference here, call it zero, zero reference, and any movement in this direction I would call y of t. Okay? So any input to this mass after it's from its equilibrium, if you would give it an initial condition or if you would disturb it from this equilibrium, then this mass m would start moving, right? If it goes below this line, we'll call it a positive movement. If it goes up, it will be a negative movement. Okay? So what we can also do is we can define an input u over here, maybe I should put it in the center, not really here, but in the center, right? A force F here on this, on this mass would be some sort of an input, let's call it the force F, which can be a function of F of t, so the input to the system would be the force F of t. So if you want to disturb this from the equilibrium, you need to pull on this force, or you need to, manipulating this force, actually you can move the mass, right? But if you just give an input and leave it, it will oscillate. So if it oscillates, you want to make it stop, you just use this force F and hold it, the way we'd, we would do it in the lab, right? Or if you want to make it move faster, you would give a stronger force F so it will start moving faster. So it will be sort of like an input, this force F, okay? So this is like a dynamic system now. So what I would like to do is I would like to represent this in this state space form just to give you an example how we approach problems like this, okay? So of course, in order to write the dynamic movement of this uh, dynamic system, I would need to write the, the Newton's law and this is where we always start. And since it's really a one-dimensional problem, right, um, we would be looking only at this line and it would be a vector only in this direction. So simply writing the equations, it would be here. Um, let's put it this way. It would be minus k times y minus b times y dot um, plus u and that would be equal to m times y double dot, right? So if this thing would be going downwards, the spring would be pulling it backwards, that's why you have a minus. Similarly, when, you're, when you have a velocity in the positive y direction, which would be y dot, you would have a, a, a force that will be pulling you backwards, 
That's why you have a minus. And the force F, I defined downwards, that's why it's a positive, positive U, is equal to M times A double dot. So Y would be the position and A would be Y double dot. That would be the acceleration, right? So this is your equation. So if you would write this in, uh, um, in, 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 a, in a state space, if you, if you would like to write this in a state space representation, what you can do is, it, is the following. You can see this is a second order differential equation. So and here, the, the state space representation asks us to do this as a first order differential equations. So what we can do is we can simply change the variable and say um, x1 of t is equal to y of t, right? Simple stuff. x2 of t is equal to y dot of t. Okay. So if you do that change, you will get two differential equations here that will represent this part. And that is actually quite straightforward. You will simply get x1 dot is equal to x2, right? That's the first equation. And the second equation would be x2 dot is equal to minus k divided by m, x1 minus b divided by m, x2 plus u divided by m. Okay, so how do I get the second one? The second equation actually comes from rewriting that equation over there with these new variables. Okay, so I have my control, I have the states. Now the states of the system is x1 and x2, where x1 is y and x2 is y dot. So if you write this in a matrix form, you would get something like this, right? x1 dot, x2 dot. And there would be a matrix here, right? There would be a matrix, and you would have x1 and x2. And now you can write these things. You would have a 0 over here and a 1 over here. And on the other side, you would have minus k divided by m and minus b divided by m, right? Plus, of course, the controls, right? And in this case, it would be 0, 1 divided by m times u, right? And where u is equal to f, okay? And the output, the output, if the output is the position y, the output would be, right, if the output is the position y, um, would be simply x1, right? Let me put it this way. Is simply um, x1, which we, we could write as 1, 0, x1, x2, right? You could write it as well, like this, all right? So now you have the system. This is your A matrix here, right? This is your B matrix, which really is a vector at this point. And this is C, which also looks like a row vector, but in fact, you could think of it as a matrix, and D is equal to zero. Okay? So this is your dynamic system now. All right? So if I would ask you, if I would ask you, is this system stable or not stable? In other words, if I disturb it from this equilibrium point, will the mass diverge or will it converge to its equilibrium point, we have learned that in order to look at this, all we need to look at is the, are the eigenvalues of the A matrix. So all we need to do is look at the eigenvalues of the A matrix and then I can tell you if the system is stable or unstable, right? Understand? So let's look at that. Look at the eigenvalues of the A matrix. So the way we look at the eigenvalues is we look at the determinant of the following matrix, right? Um, zero minus lambda, right? Zero minus lambda, minus one, minus k divided by m, minus b divided by m, minus lambda, and set this equal to zero. And find the lambdas, right? We are looking at the eigenvalues of this thing. So the eigenvalues, <coughs> Uh, of that thing would be, oh, yeah, the eigenvalues would be 
um, minus lambda times minus b divided by m minus lambda minus, you have a minus one over here, that's why it's a plus, minus k divided by m is equal to zero. So you would get lambda square plus b divided by m lambda plus k divided by m. Um, minus, minus, well, then it will be a minus because I'm, I need to multiply everything. No, that's correct, right? That's a minus and that's a minus, right? Am I doing this right? Oh, that's a plus one. Why do I get a minus one? I don't know. This is a plus one. Of course it's a plus one. Sorry. So that's a minus, so that's a plus, that's a plus, and that's a zero. Sorry. Okay. Good. All right. Um, all right. So I will get two lambdas from here, lambda 1 and lambda 2, and that will hopefully tell me if the system is going to stable or unstable. I can tell you right now, if you don't have a damper in this system, the thing will oscillate forever. It will not be unstable, but it will also not be stable either, so it will just oscillate. In linear systems, we call it marginally stable. In real life or in nonlinear systems, uh, we would call it something else. Okay? So, um, but if you have a damper here, which means if B is not equal to zero, you can guarantee pretty much from a physical point of view that this will not diverge, okay? So that's how I would look at the stability, all right? And this is how I would get the state space representation of a dynamic system. Now you can do this, of course, for an airplane or a helicopter or a rocket or something like that. It would be a lot more difficult, but it would be the same idea. So in this class, when I start designing controllers and I start here and I give you something like this, don't ask me where is this coming from. Well, it's coming from all this, okay? That's, that's how it goes. Now, here's uh, one thing I would like to show you, and that is, could we do the same analysis using Laplace transforms, okay? You know, the thing you have learned in system dynamics, can we do the same? Well, we can. In fact, there's a connection between the Laplace transform and the state space representation. So this is something I want to show you. Um, consider, sorry, this is not writing well. Consider the Laplace transform of x plus du, okay? So, let's take the first equation and write the Laplace transform if it look like this. C x of s minus x of zero, where this is the initial condition, right? Is equal to a times x of s, this one here, plus b times u of s, all right? And the second equation here, y of s, is equal to c times x of s plus d times u of s. All right, the Laplace transform. So let's take this. Let's 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 assume the initial condition for the system is zero, just to make this problem a little simpler, and rewrite this first equation. You rewrite this first equation, and you'll get the following as times identity minus a is equal to x of s and b times u of s, right? That's the first equation. You get x of s from here, x of s would be equal to si minus a over minus 1 b times u of s, okay? Substitute this into that into the um, output equation, 
And what you get is y of s is equal to c s i minus a over minus 1 b of u of s plus d times u of s. Okay? Take these ones into the u parenthesis and you will get y of s is equal to c times c i minus a over minus 1 b plus d u of s. Okay? So which means really the output y divided by the input, right? That's how you write transfer functions. Output divided by input. Right? So the transfer function would be c times s i minus a over minus 1 b plus d. Right? And this is your transfer function. It looks, looks at least like a, yeah. It's a transfer function. Y divided by U. Output divided by input. So if you would, you know, you have a uh, denominator here, if you would multiply it with D and all that, you would get some function up here in the denominator, and in the denominator you would get SI <coughs> minus A. So this one here. On the, uh, and, and on the top, you would get some function as a function of C, B, D, and all that stuff. It would be up here, okay? And so this would be a transfer function. So what do we do when we look at the stability of this system, right? What do we do? We look at the, the roots of the characteristic equation. Want to look at the roots of this characteristic equation? What is this equal to? Look at this. You, you, gonna, you, you need to look at the roots of this, of this equation, right? You need to, need to look at the roots of this equation. So, and this is quite similar, as you, as you see, it's similar to the, um, um, to the eigenvalue problem, if you look at this. So you want to look at the roots of this equation, since it's a matrix, matrix system, you would be looking at this. And this is nothing but looking at the eigenvalue problem. Okay? This is nothing but looking at the eigenvalue problem, looking at the roots of this thing. So, um, coming back to this problem, the question would be, can we find a transfer function? Sorry, let me, uh, oh, here it is. Can I do a similar thing over here? In other words, could I look at the transfer function of this system where I look at the input-output situation, right? And we could actually use that formulation over there. Let me, where should I start? Maybe remove this part. And write the same transfer function over there. <clears throat> you know that thing? Y of s, y of s divided by u of s try to find the transfer function for this system. So it will be y of s divided by u of s, and you can see the thing over there. That's c, right? I'm talking about this one. OK. So you, you would need to write c, and we have already written, I just erased it, c is equal to 1, 0, right? And um, I would need to write si minus a, so s uh, i minus a, that would be 1, 1, 0, 0, si minus a, a is over there, it was 0, 
1 minus k divided by m, b divided by m. Okay. Let me remove this part. It by m um, over minus one times b. Uh, that's zero and one divided by m plus d. In our case, d is equal to zero. So I would have a plus. Um, zero, 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 zero. So, okay, that's all zero. Okay? All right. So let's start with this part is equal to one, zero. And we would have S minus one K divided by M, S plus B divided by M. Okay, minus one of this one, zero, one divided by m, so that's it. So we need to take the inverse of this one, which is not really that hard, and then multiply it with this, and you can try this at home, but I'm just going to write you the result. If you do that, you will find something like this, one divided by you would get something like this. And finally, the transfer function looks like that. Plus k. Okay? You look like this. So this is your transfer function of the dynamic system. Okay? <coughs> so if you want to check the stability of this, all you need to do is look at the roots of the, <coughs> of the um, uh, characteristic equation. And the characteristic equation over here is now equal to m s squared plus b s plus k is equal to 0, which translates to s squared plus b divided by m times s plus k divided by m is equal to 0. <coughs> so you look at the stability of this, you want to look at the we we'll look at S1 and S2, right? And the way we learned it in system dynamics is if everything is on the, um, is on the negative side, it's over here, of the um, uh, complex plane, then things are stable, right? And this is exactly what we would get over here. Now compare this one with what we had found over here in terms of the eigenvalue problem, in fact, it's the same. Okay? You see, that's the same. Now, <clears throat> the, way, the reason why we got this one equation over here and one equation over here is, of course, also because this was a simple input, uh, single input, single output equation. Okay? It was a single input, single output uh, system. And therefore, we get this really nice uh, single input, single output type of transfer function. I mean, over here, I was cheating a little bit, right? Because I was assuming these are matrices, and then here I have a matrix, and then I will look at the determinant, but you can see the connection a little bit, all right? And um, here we are having, uh, here it's a lot clearer because it was a single input, single output system. So this is um, kind of a, a good example of what we were trying to do in this class. Yes? You know that sing, uh, transfer functions is used for single, sim, yeah. single, input, single output systems. And you said in modern control we use states. Right. As, so why is it useful to do that? To convert uh, no. our, uh, uh -huh. To a transfer function, you mean? Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I'm just trying to show you the, the connection here. 
In this class, we will always be working with matrices. We will not be going into transfer functions. This is just to show you that connection. Okay? So to show you that we are not doing much different than... than uh, um, I'm just trying to say that there's a connection between system dynamics and what you have done with single input, single output systems with what we are trying to do over here. Because when you, uh, I will start with x dot equals ax plus bu in this class. Always that's the start. I will give you saying that this is a dynamic system. Let's do this, 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 this. You need to understand where this dynamic system is coming from. Why is, why, where this linear system is coming from. You need to understand that it's a perturbation around the equilibrium point. You need to understand that what we are looking at is a bit different from the um, single input, single output transfer function approach but yet there's a connection, you see. I mean, it's, it's always dangerous to lose the overall picture when you try do stuff. Because you'll see in a short time, you will have all these um, linear systems and then uh, start doing some equations and all this. And then you might be losing the bigger picture. So that's why I'm spending time over here, okay? So any other questions? All right. So um, let me let me go one step ahead. So um, as a result, what you what you had here it was a second order system, right? In this in this example, but you might of course have higher order systems, right? Might have. might have much higher order systems. For instance, um, say a dynamic system system is represented by an nth order differential by, by an nth order set of differential equations. This order set of differential equations. So basically what you're trying to say is that x1 is equal to x2 2 dot is equal to x3, and so on and so forth. And you go x1, n minus 1 is equal to xn, right? Where x1 dot is equal to minus a n x1. Do that. Minus a n minus 1 x2, minus la 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 la, minus x1 xn plus B0, U of um, U of N plus B1, U of N minus 1 plus B N U. Okay? So this would be rather a generic representation of our, of our system. And um, there are different ways to assume it. So, so if you had nth order differential equation, then your system would pretty much look like this, right? And there are different forms to represent this in literature. Um, if, if you have this kind of thing, and then you could actually write the outputs like this. And we will restrict ourselves to the, to the, uh, to the generic case but if you're really interested, we call these canonical forms. Uh, you could look in many of the references that I presented how to represent this kind of an approach in, in, uh, in linear systems. Uh, but I don't want to spend too much time on these forms here. Uh, maybe I can give you one example. Um, yeah, I mean, you could write this, of course, in a... Could 
write it like this. plus this function mu <clears throat> And this would be the generic form of your representations. Um, yeah, I don't want to go into this thing too much, the canonical forms. Um, but I just want you to be aware of these representations. Okay, so let me just stop here for a moment and um, let's give a short break. And in the next hour, I'll talk about controllability and observability finally. Okay?